pick up exactly where we left. We have uh, derived, or you know, I, I tell you, the process of deriving the shape function for a 2D triangular element. Uh, then we end up with something like this. Uh, the um, displacement function is a you know two variable function. Um, but the two variable functions are buried in n i, n j, and n k, and they are just the linear functions of x and y. Then, if you time them with your uh, nodal displacement in x direction, it'll give you the um, uh, x direction displacement of any points in your element. So the same thing with y. So you just need to plug in the nodal y uh, displacement. So um, yeah, I guess uh, the once we get that, uh, it's relatively easy. We just say, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna go for uh, for the E K, right? We're gonna for the E K, so we're gonna do the uh, principal virtual work. We're gonna do the uh, external virtual work uh, equals to um, internal virtual work. The the external virtual work is uh, uh, yeah, you know what. Uh, extremely easy to do. So basically we will we'll, we'll say uh, if uh, our virtual uh, displacement is uh, simply um, the um, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll look at what we we have. So basically it's a um, virtual of uh, um, UI, VI, uh, UJ, VJ, uh, UK, VK um, times this, uh, um, you know, F vector, FIX, FIY, FJX, FJY, FKX, FKY. Um, oh, uh, yeah, then, yeah. If this is that, then you times this guy. It's gonna gonna give you uh, virtual uh, external work. So that's that's how you it is. But uh, the the really challenging part is this guy. Uh, for for this guy, um, what we need to do is we need to realize that um, the um, virtual internal work is the uh, integral over the volume of your element and then uh, you need to have all the stresses mm, and then with all the possible virtual strings then the, the question is like uh, you know for this guy you know how many stresses are we talking about uh, in fact uh, you find out uh, you have a, uh, it's a 2d element so you gotta be uh, there's a normal string x and uh, there's probably a normal string y. I mean, just to be fair, then there's a shear string in x y. Uh, so correspondingly, you have uh, the stresses and. Um, if we're gonna talk about the virtual string, so those guys need to be virtual. Those guys need to be real. Um, so how do we do that? Uh, principle of uh, virtual, uh, print, no, not principle. Serial of infinitesimal string, okay. So uh, this guy should be equals to uh, uh, partial u, partial x. And this guy should be equals to partial v, partial y, and then uh, this guy should be uh, partial v, partial x plus partial u, partial y. So now all you need to do is just just plug things in. Okay, you got a u, you got a v, and then you just need to do the partial derivatives, and you need to also realize that, um, like those guys, like UI, UJ, UK, um, they control everything. If they are virtual, then this would be virtual. If they are real, then this would be real. 
And more importantly, those guys, they are not a function of x and y, so they can come out. So what you end up getting at is uh, you're just taking partial derivative with respect to uh, x for n, the shape functions. So let's do this guy. You say my x equals to partial u, partial x equals to, yeah, just, just copy it. Come on. It's not that hard. Partial ni, partial x. Uh, then, yeah, do you want to add the virtual here? Yeah, let's just add the virtual. Then virtual ui, okay. Then plus um, nj x virtual uj uh, plus uh, nk partial x and then virtual uk. Um, but keep in mind that we wanted somehow in the end uh, equal this whole thing to this guy and then we want to include a uh, displacement vector that arranges this in the same way as the force vector so we need to I mean this is totally fine but we need to rearrange it so that we have something to work with it becomes partial uh, ni partial x uh, zero you're like oh what 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 zero yeah just hold on a second partial nj partial x zero then partial nk partial x zero times uh, our displacement vector arranged exactly the same way as this guy so it's like uh, uh, ui, which is, uh, everything is virtual, okay, I don't want to write it. vi, uj, vj, uk, and vk. And then now you know the, the zero guys, the actual corresponding to those terms, which simply says um, the virtual displacement in y direction doesn't affect the displacement in x direction within the element. And yeah, this is pretty much the same thing. Then um, yeah, um, so with this background, we can easily write out. And I'm not even gonna write it out. I'm just gonna say uh, it becomes zero. N i partial x zero. N j partial x. Um, par oh, ah, oh, told on not partial y. Okay. Partial y because now this guy is y, so this remember is a, a dv uh, partial v partial y. Okay, <laughs> it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, partial nk partial y and times if I if I call this entire thing, I call it uh, uh, delta, then yeah same thing and then the, the placement of zero here which is kind of opposite of here will ensure like those terms they go to v not u okay so the finally uh, the um, x and y um, yeah this is a fun one uh, it's uh, still the same thing so but whatever go to u will take differentiation about y so it becomes n i partial y partial n i uh, partial x yeah if you write it out and you you will know this is correct so partial n j partial y partial n j partial x then partial n k y partial n k x six terms times this guy so uh, if you haven't been doing like calculus for the past uh, um, you know two years then you look at all the partial derivatives, you're like, oh, this is bad. But uh, yeah, believe me, it's actually not too bad because you know what? The n's, uh, if you flip the nodes before, they are linear terms of x and y. 
There's a constant term, but uh, when you take partial derivative of constant, it goes to zero. Then the if you're taking partial derivative with respect to y, the only thing on the left is the coefficients in before y. So in fact, uh, you will find out uh, it's quite easy. Like partial n i partial x is actually just equals to two a over one over two a times b i. Uh, then, you know, partial n i with respect to y is simply, um, you know, that times the c i. Uh, yeah, you know, you you got it. So, in fact, if you take the 2a, 1 over 2a out, uh, those are just like, a, you know, b i c i, uh, oh, actually, it's, it's opposite, like c i b i, c j b j, c k b k, just a number, okay? Uh, so, in the end, uh, if I want to like rearrange this, in fact, uh, since we're gonna go matrix, I'm gonna go all the way matrix, I'm gonna actually just say the virtual string vector. Uh, you're like, why are you arranging it this way? I mean, I just like to. Uh, is equals to uh, 2a over mm, uh, bi 0, bj 0, bk 0, and 0, ci 0, cj 0, ck, and then finally ci bi cj bj ck bk times the this guy. And uh, uh, we, we're actually going to uh, call this uh, whole thing a different name because we don't wanna, we don't want to keep writing it. We're going to call it a B matrix. Um, it, it does not change. What what happens is like the B matrix. What it does is that uh, a B matrix, if you times the real node or displacement. It's gonna give you the uh, strings within any point inside your body. And you're like, how could that be? It's keep changing. Yeah, because the B matrix um, is supposedly, if you take the partial derivatives, it's supposed to be a function of x or y. But because we are doing the simplest element possible, which you use linear equations uh, as our dif displacement equation assumptions. Um, those terms are all constant. So what it says is that once you have the this uh, displacement of the three nodes, uh, the stress, a string inside your um, element, no matter where they are, it's going to be constant. So that's why it's it's a uh, it's actually a, called a constant a string triangle. Uh, so the natural question is that uh, either a non-constant string triangle, yes, uh, yeah, of course. But to do that, you need a more complicated uh, um, uh, function that has to have higher order terms. And it can be done. In fact, uh, you know, uh, you see, if you have ever used those advanced finite element software, you see a uh, triangle element that has uh, some middle nodes. Uh, the introduction of middle nodes allow your shape function to have curvature within the element so that uh, uh, inside the element, the stress can actually change. But if you have only three nodes, you're going to end up with a constant, constant, uh, um, um, constant string triangle, which you know it's wrong because, I mean, like, how can everything be constant? But if your element is small enough within your body, then it doesn't matter. Because in between elements, your string can change, your stress can change. You can still have a nice contour. You just have to have more element. No free lunch, okay? So basically the bottom line is that 
uh, we have now a uh, matrix B that will turn your displacement vector into a uh, string vector. And if you have a virtual displacement vector, then you have a virtual string. So once you get that, uh, the next step, naturally, um, is to calculate uh, the um, is to calculate the virtual um, uh, principle of, of virtual work. Okay, so uh, let's do that uh, principle of virtual work. So now. Uh, let's do the internal virtual work, and then um, we know it's simply um, integral over v. Uh, in this case, um, we only we only have three uh, type of stress and string, so it'll be the uh, virtual real virtual oh, not real what 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 does that mean. It's the real uh, stress in x direction times the uh, virtual string in x plus um, the uh, y direction times that guy, then plus the uh, tau okay, x y. We all know that's a real shear stress uh, times the virtual shear string and dv. Okay. And uh, yeah, it seems you're gonna like uh, go all, mm, um, go all like matrix ish. Yeah, we're gonna rewrite this as uh, basically the um, mm, stress vector x um, y. Okay, got that. Then times the, the virtual string vector. Okay. Um, then you're like, wait a minute. Um, what is this? Um, yeah, didn't you tell us uh, uh, this material isotropic? You got the um, elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio. And uh, we, we also know that uh, this uh, B times this real delta, uh, it's going to give us the real uh, real string. If somehow I time the real string with the real material property, shouldn't that give me this guy? And did you recall like what that thing tells, what, what that thing's about? Uh, it's what we call a generalized Hooke's law. So basically, generalized Hooke's law. Um, it's it, it just saying that uh, you know, if you know stress, you want to. If you know string, you want to stress. Yeah, sure. You just times k. If you know want to do otherwise, yeah, you can do that. They are linear. They somehow they correlate to each other. But so basically, um, there is a way to go if you know um, the stress. Uh, you can get uh, your uh, strain, you can get your stress. But then there's two uh, kind of complications. Um, is uh, what are we talking about here? Mm, so basically, uh, what we want to get is uh, a formula that gives us this guy. So we'll say, yeah, can we find a... Um, uh, we want this, right? Can we find a, a D matrix, uh, whatever it is, the three by three? Uh, then it'll give us that. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that uh, um, because two D, um, it's a little bit different than three D, but uh, it it's we we'll say D is uh, uh, different. Uh, depending on 
uh, what uh, kind of to uh, the problem uh, you are uh, solving. Um, if you want to know more about this, you should really take uh, you know solid mechanics or mechanics advanced mechanics material. Some some schools they call it that. I don't know why, but it's really solid mechanics. But the 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 kind of two D problem you can solve, there's two. Like the the one is what they call the plane stress problem. Plane stress is two D problem. Uh, then the other number two of that is the plane strain two uh, D problem. Uh, the uh, you know if you want to know by example without any uh, kind of complicated uh, mathematical terms, uh, this guy you can think of it as it's uh, it's a re really I mean it's really every two D problem is a three D problem. This 2D problem, print stress, is actually a 3D uh, plate, like really thin. Um, and then you're doing it, you're, you're doing everything in plane. But uh, if you look at, uh, because this is thin, um, on this surface, on this surface, there's all three surfaces. So there's no stress. Uh, that's pushing on those two surfaces from the back but because of that um, the, the the material are allowed to expand when they compress or contract when they are you know in tension in and outside of the plane uh, so that's why I call it the plane stress problem then the plane strain problem is kind of opposite. A classic example is uh, um, you analyze a infinite, uh, like infinitely long dam, and then its cross section is something like that, and then you are basically, you know, analyzing this dam. But you don't want to build a 3D model of this dam because I mean that's there's infinitely long or very long. Uh, so you're just gonna do a 2D analysis on it, uh, see how much it moves in 2D. What happens in this 2D problem is that because it's infinitely long, so it's uh, symmetric on both sides. Because it's symmetric, so any point on this plane they cannot move this way or that way. Um, which means if you take a, a kind of slice out of it, this slice is not growing or shrinking in this other direction. And then so the deformation in this direction for this 2D problem is zero. That's why it's called plain strain problem. But uh, for plain strain problem, to actually make those things to actually not moving, you actually have to have some like forces acting on it otherwise I mean you, you don't get that effect so there will actually be some out of plane stresses in your element and uh, uh, it's just you won't be able to solve it in here uh, yeah or yeah I mean, in a way you can solve for it but you don't care it in your formulation but this does uh, affect how you transfer this to this so uh, if you want to read more, uh, just like I said, grab a solid mechanics book and read more. But what uh, uh, in the end uh, it uh, uh, signifies for plain stress, your your d equals to e over one minus the, um, like your curvy v square, and then it is like a one v v one zero 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 one minus v over two yeah then for this guy uh it's uh it's a little bit complicated it's uh um e over one plus uh, this v v plus and then uh you have this uh um d 
B, yeah, hold on a second, I'll tell you what it is. Zero, 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 and half. And then we're, uh, B is the negative uh, V, uh, and then one plus uh, V, and then, uh, yeah, I know it's, it's a little crazy, right? Uh, I'm not going to derive this here, but you go ahead and watch your solid mechanics book. And then the D is uh, square plus uh, minus 1 and 2 square plus minus 1. Okay, so you got this. Yeah, you got this. Um, now, once we get all that, um, so we can say uh, finally, um, uh, we got our ek equals to the integral over v of uh, those things, and then it, it turns out to be uh, b transpose times d, whatever your choice, times b. D, D. Um, you're oh, you're like like how did that happen? Yeah, same thing happened just like before. Uh, like this vector is simply B times your virtual displacement, and this vector can be obtained by your B times your real displacement, then times T, uh, then times D. So once you get rid of the virtual displacement, consider it's not part of integral. No, it's part of integral, but it's constant. And then your real displacement is the same thing. So they're all on this side and this side. Then you compare to your um, initial, um, like a external virtual work, which has F in it. Then you get rid of the virtual displacement. Then you end up with this as your EK, okay? That connects your real displacement to your real force. Uh, then we'll say note all terms in B and D are not, uh, in this case, function of uh, x, y uh, for this uh, um, constant uh, uh, triangle element. Uh, so basically the, the thing is like, uh, yeah, if uh, everything's constant, it's like a constant, you do integral over V, it simply equals to this constant times the volume of your element. So the, the, the EK really is, uh, becomes, uh, uh, the area times the t, so that's, uh, this is the thickness. Uh, this is the volume. Then, um, times uh, b t times d times b. Um, in my, oh, that's it. In my previous lecture, since we're actually doing it face-to-face uh, -face and everything, I actually, like one of the, um, you know, final projects on programming is actually to, um, to, to, to program this. It's actually not that hard. I mean, they're all constants. Then compare two cases. I, I give them a, a, a beam. Um, that is... Uh, uh, like this, and then I say, okay, I'll give you the E, V, and all that type of stuff. I'll give you the dimensions, i give you this. I actually have the student do two things. The first thing is to actually program this, and then divide your beam into a lot of 2D elements, and then calculate the deflection, versus uh, like uh, you just do a beam and calculate deflection versus uh, and uh, you do a you know classic uh, MOM formula 
um, and then to look at the deflection result to show that it actually works. And I also have students to do some like a, you know, coloring of the stresses based on the uh, stress within each triangle, and then do that. Uh, then to to show you that the um, um, the changing stresses along the beam. So it's it's pretty advanced. If you're really interested into this, uh, if you want to do more, you can do it yourself. I'm not gonna you know require that or anything. That would be a little crazy, um, but. Uh, you know, that will be the end of instructions for this class. Yeah. If you want to venture further, I would uh, suggest you really, um, yeah, to, to really do this type of thing, to do to get into finite atom modeling, uh, you really need to kind of learn more about um, solid mechanics, plasticity, those type of advanced topics. Once you get that, you will have a full understanding. This right now is uh, all I can cover in this class. But I think as a structural engineer, like what we cover here is, uh, you know, enough. It's it's really enough for structural engineers. Uh, if you're mechanical, then probably not. But I would say if you just do the linear elements and know some of the 2D elements, um, you're able to handle like 90% of structural analysis problems. Okay, then just uh, look at my post on Canvas. I'll hopefully see you next semester. Thank you.